Pennsylvania Congressman uh, Mike Kelly survived a nasty battle with the coronavirus, but it didn't change his perspective about wanting to reopen his state. And he joins us now to tell us why he filed a lawsuit against the governor over it. Welcome. Thanks for coming, Congressman. We're pleased to have you here. Um, you, you. you tested you. positive for you're welcome uh, for Corona uh, 19 yep. back in March, and you were one of the lucky ones that survived this. Uh, you didn't need to be hospitalized, but the virus is no joke. Do you think that governors and various people are not cognizant of how hard this is? I mean, would you wish this on anybody to get Corona? No, of course not. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but by the same token, uh, when you look at Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania and, and what Governor Wolf did kind of was defying the odds or the, the data that was already presented as to which parts of the states, a big state, there's certain states where there was very little of the coronavirus and very few deaths from it. One of those areas is the district that I represent, even though I went through it. And by the way, I did take uh, the hydroxychloroquine. Uh, I took it very early. Uh, my doctor prescribed it for me, and I, w I got through the uh, the coronavirus. Uh, but once you get back on your feet, I think it's just who we are as a people. We want to get back to work. We want to get outside. We want to be able to see people. And the idea behind it is you do something that's very smart and very safe. We have the ability to work within the parameters of what's been outlined being safe, being cognizant of the fact that when we come in contact with other people, we have to be careful. I know in my case, I didn't go out for almost a month. I stayed home. Uh, we still uh, are very limited to those who we can see. But then it comes down to, in the Constitution, like I go to Mass every day. I cannot go to Mass right now. Uh, even though I go to a very big church, we're still in that kind of a lockdown period. So I want to see things start to function within the parameters of what's safe and what's smart for every single American. Congressman, this is Megan. Um, you are 72 years old and you are a type 2 diabetic. So that puts you in a category of those who are particularly vulnerable to this virus. Can you walk yes. us through your symptoms, how sick you were, and how quickly um, did this disease come on to you? Yeah, you know, uh, Megan, that's really a good point because I, I thought at first I just had some strain of the flu. I didn't really recognize it as something that I hadn't had before. My wife, though, was very uh, very aware of it. She says, you know what? I mean, you're sleeping with two blankets on. You're still cold. You're not eating. You have no sense of taste. And when you sleep, you're sleeping like 16 to 18 hours a day, and you're still tired. Now, you know, fortunately, I, I didn't have the respiratory problem. But I got to my doctor, Dr. DiCuccio at the Butler, uh, in Butler here. He very quickly got me tested. I went into the Butler Hospital, uh, the drive through got tested. Within 24 hours, they told me, listen, you have the virus, so what we want you to do is stay home uh, and we'll prescribe stuff. So z -Pack, which most people use, and then the hydroxychloroquine, I took it. So maybe, maybe that reduced the effects on me, but I didn't have the respiratory part, which is a real blessing. Did you just say that you took the hydrochloroquine? I'm not, my sound yes, is a little weird. Yes, I took it. Wow. I, I can't believe anybody with a brain would take that stuff, but you seem like an intelligent guy. You're a representative in Congress. Yeah. Why would you take that drug? There are terrible consequences. Yeah, well, well, I appreciate that's your view. That's not my view, and we're on the view, but let me just say this to you. In my case, <laughs> I right. can't say definitively that it, that's what, what cured me, but I can say definitively that I took it, and I can say that I went through a period of time that I was sick. I came out of it within about nine days, and then I self-quarantined for another month on top of that. So if you stay within the parameters of what's the guidance, and if you're smart about what you do, you stay safe, you keep other people safe by staying away from them, I don't think there's anything stupid about that. I still think I'm a relatively pretty intelligent guy, uh, but I don't tell anybody there's a one size fits all. I say, go to the doctors that you have faith in, listen to what they say. If your doctor says, don't, don't take it, then don't take it. My doctor thought, well, you know what? We have something that we think could possibly work Alert from and Canada. we're gonna give it to you. PA delegation member and staff call WPA Secretary of Health. I'm getting all kinds of strange things in my ear, but Sonny, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Wolf. I, I, okay, it's your turn now, babe. 
Okay. Uh, Congressman, you know, last July you, you got a lot of flack for, for saying uh, they talk about people of color. I'm a person of color. I'm white. I'm uh, right. an Anglo-Saxon. Now, your, your fellow people of color uh, in Pennsylvania, African-Americans, they make up about 12 percent of the population in Pennsylvania. An overwhelming number of those um, black Pennsylvanians are essential workers, yet they represent 30 percent of the coronavirus cases. Given what you went through with this virus, Congressman, including losing about 30 pounds, why are you in favor of opening up the state with no real federal plan? Well, I, I think, you know, Sonny, I think there are plans in place, and I think there are guidelines that we would stay within. Listen, I really have great faith in the American people. I think we're very smart. I, I think once we're aware of the dangers, then we can work within those parameters. My real question or was, or my concern was, we had a governor uh, who was saying, no, this is the way it's going to take place. Now, the district that I represent, most of the counties, with the exception of Butler County, went from being red to yellow. Butler County was, was not included in the yellow, which gave you a partial opening up. And when the question came down, so why are we staying shut down in Butler County? The governor's answer was, because uh, looking at the data and then other conditions, this was my decision. So then it comes down to, Look, look, there's a constitution that really does allow us to do certain things and really gives us great privileges that no place else in the world has. And in fact, in a couple of days, we're going to have the Memorial Day uh, commemoration. It's not a celebration at the beginning of summer. It's about those who gave their lives that we could celebrate and that we could enjoy the greatest democracy and the greatest nation the world's ever known. So my, my, my question was always, do you really believe that this is a nanny state, that people on their own and determine and work within the guidelines. I can tell you, small businesses, they adjust all the time to conditions that change. There's no one size fits all, but if there's regulations put in place, we can work within those regulations. For instance, where I'm at now in Sharon, Pennsylvania, if I walk across the street, I'm in Ohio. In Ohio, you don't have to wear a mask. You can go and get your hair cut today. You can go to restaurants today. That's just across the street. So when you back it off, you say, well, the governors, they have great executive powers, and I respect that. But the other question comes, at what point, at what point do we trust the American people to be not only safe, but smart and do the right thing for the right reasons? I think it comes down to basic constitutional values. Congressman, uh, this is Megan. Um, I believe that a culture war is raging in this country over the reopening of the economy. And it's raging in your home state of Pennsylvania as well, where Governor Tom Wolf has been criticized by conservatives for reopening too slowly. Um, I want to know what you think of that. And when you see um, the protesters across the country who I think are just God-fearing, good, tax-paying Americans who simply want to be able to go back to work and feed their families and are willing to maybe take some risks to do that rather than go bankrupt and starve. Yeah, well, we may all know every single penny that either your local government, your state government, or your federal government uh, has suspending spends comes out of the pocket of some hard working American taxpayer. When people aren't working, when businesses aren't open, the revenue streams dry up. Now, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. Let's do what's smart and what's safe. Let's work within the parameters, the guidelines that are set out to make sure that if you need to wear a face mask, wear a face mask. If you need to have on rubber gloves, put on the gloves. If you're sick, stay home. Wash your hands. Keep your hands away from your face. And for you know, forever. Listen, I grew up with a set of parents that were constantly worried about our well-being. They're the ones that taught us how to do these things. They were reinforced as we went to school. And as we become adults and raise our families, we instill those same values, those same ideas in our children. So when you look at Pennsylvania, really, Pennsylvania had the opportunity. It's a big state. In Philadelphia, completely, completely different maybe than Erie, Pennsylvania, where we had hardly any cases of the virus and very few deaths. We never had an overload in our hospital. So you got to ask yourself, yeah. why do we use a one size fits all? I just think it's better. Give the American people the rules, give them the guidelines, tell right. them how to operate, and they will operate safely and smartly. Yes. We would, we, one would always hope that was the case, but as we know, human beings are human beings and they don't always follow the rules or do the things they're supposed to do. But we're very glad that you came uh, and thanks for coming and we'll be right back. Whoopi, thanks so much. Thanks to all of you. Thank you for having me on.